Hey guys, Brian Schultz here with Cape Falcon Kayak and welcome to the 15th video in our free Greenland paddle building series. In this video, we're gonna cover a couple different options for finishing your Greenland paddle. Now, remember, this is a series, so if you haven't done this already, make sure that you go back and at least watch the introduction video. I'll throw a link up on the screen for that right now, and you can find the entire playlist with all these videos in order here on the channel. You can also find this entire series for free without any commercials on my website. And then, as always, if you want to support the free content that we put out here, think about picking up a set of our paddle plans, checking out our skin on frame boat building courses, buying your next piece of paddling gear from us, or just making a donation. You can find all that stuff on our website and there are links in the video description below. And of course, if you have any thoughts or any questions, make sure you leave them in the comments. All right, enjoy the video. So now that you're finished carving and sanding your Greenland paddle here, next thing you wanna think about is putting on some type of a finish to protect the wood. Now, the first point I wanna make here is that any Greenland paddle that's made out of softwood, and especially one that's made out of red cedar, is going to get dinged up over time. But Fortunately, unless you have some type of really serious damage to it, usually it's not a functional problem and you can just do a quick spot repair. And then even though your Greenland paddle is gonna look a little bit worse every year when you're paddling, it's not actually gonna paddle any different. And for me, I like to just finish my paddles really simply and not put a lot of time into it and just accept that usually after about five years, my primary Greenland paddle isn't gonna look so good and I'm gonna end up sanding it down, refinishing it, and it's gonna become my spare paddle and then I'll make myself a brand new paddle. And it just ends up being kind of a natural cycle. So I'm gonna give you a different range of options that you can do here from something really cheap and inexpensive and easy to something that's gonna take a little bit more work. But the difference between these doesn't have to do with functional performance. It really just has to do with your own aesthetic preferences. So first thing I wanna say is that you don't wanna use varnish on a Greenland paddle because one, good marine varnish is expensive and you have to put a lot of coats on to get a durable finish. But when you're talking about putting it over softwood on something that's gonna bang into things, it still doesn't end up being a durable finish because it ends up getting water intrusion anywhere that you have a nick on the paddle. And then it's a huge pain to strip the whole thing down and put seven more coats of marine varnish on. And then also varnish tends to have a slippery surface that raises blisters on your hands, which is why we usually don't put it on the handles when we're varnishing oars. So what makes a lot more sense for a Greenland paddle is to put some type of an oil or an oil wax finish on it. Now, starting with your least expensive option, what you can do is just go to the local hardware store and get yourself anything that says teak oil or Danish oil or tongue oil. And that's generally not any of those actual oils. Usually it's just some super cheap oil mixed with some really cheap industrial solvents but it works fine to soak into the paddle a little bit. It helps to exclude some moisture, and that's really gonna help at the tips so cracks don't start down the ends of your Greenland paddle. So moving upwards from a cheap oil finish in terms of both durability and longevity is a really cool product that I've been fond of for a couple years now called Rubio Monocoat. And what this stuff is, is a proprietary chemistry of waxes and oils that does a great job of really deeply integrating itself into the surface of the wood. Now, Rubio is actually intended for interior use on hardwood floors and countertops, but I've been so impressed by how well it's held up on my own counters and on my own floors that a couple years ago, I decided to start experimenting with putting it on Greenland paddles. And so far, I think this is easier to apply, less expensive, and more durable than any of the straight oil finishes or the more complex oil and wax preparations that I put on myself over the years. So big fan of Rubio these days, but you do have to put it on in a very specific application, otherwise it doesn't go so well. Now, before we get into that, I wanna mention that this comes in a few different sizes. You can get a 20 milliliter bottle for $10. That's just gonna be barely enough to do a Greenland paddle, but you can also get a 100 milliliter bottle for $20. That's gonna be plenty to do a Greenland paddle and it's gonna give you extra so you can recoat it a few times over the years as well. So I feel like the 100 milliliter size for $20 really represents your best value in this stuff. Now, there's also a larger size of this, and the advantage to that one is it comes with its own 
hardening agent. And the cure time for this without the hardening agent is about three weeks. The cure time with the hardening agent is just a couple days. So if time is a consideration in finishing your Greenland paddle, you might want to get the more expensive one, although it's going to be a lot of material. So probably only something you want to do if you're building a bunch of Greenland paddles or if you're going to be doing any other household projects with the product. Now, the application instructions for this, according to Rubio, is you're gonna pour it onto the wood surface and then use a card to scrape it across so you don't lose any of the material soaking up into an applicator. But that doesn't really work very well in a soft wood application like red cedar here, and also it tends to drain over the sides and drip onto the floor. So the way that I like to apply this stuff is I'll get myself a little cup with graduated marks on the sides and a two inch thick foam brush. And I'll pour 30 milliliters into the bottom of the cup and then very rapidly, I'm gonna paint the entire surface with the foam brush, taking extra care to make sure there's a bunch of it on the tip so it really soaks down into the ends and prevents cracks at the tip of the paddle. Now, immediately once you've got this stuff painted on, you wanna very quickly scrub it into the surface with either a blue or a white scrubby pad. So I'm sure you're familiar with the green Scotch-Brite pads. They also come in blue or white, and that's the color you wanna use so you don't end up scratching the surface of the wood. And then once you've really scrubbed this stuff in really hard using a bunch of elbow grease, next thing you wanna do is get yourself a dry rag and you wanna wipe this off till it's completely dry. Unlike other oil finishes where it's actually beneficial to let the oil sit on for a while and then wipe it off, with the Rubio, it's important that as soon as you apply it, you wipe it off so it's nice and dry. Now, I just wanna reiterate here that this whole process needs to happen very quickly. If you put this on too slowly, it's gonna get sticky and then you're not gonna be able to get it off and it's actually gonna end up with a less durable finish. So once again, that's 30 milliliters of this stuff into a cup and paint it on rapidly with a two inch foam brush and then you wanna scrub it really hard and really quickly with a green, or I'm sorry, a blue or a white scrubby pad, and then you wanna wipe the whole thing completely dry. Now, even though this stuff is called Rubio Monocoat, I've found that on thirsty woods like red cedar, it actually works better to put a second coat on. And if I'm using this stuff without the hardening agent, what I'll do is I'll apply my first coat and then I'll let it sit for about four or five days, and then I'll come back and I'll put on a second coat using the same system, although you're not gonna need quite as much. Now, something to keep in mind here is that this stuff comes in pretty small bottles, so it doesn't seem like it's as good of a deal as other oil finishes, but it actually goes a lot farther because it doesn't have any solvents. And something you can do to even get more coverage out of this is when you're done painting it on with your foam brush, you can squeeze the excess out of the foam brush and back into the cup. Now, Something else to mention about the Rubio is that it comes in a bunch of different colors. And if you want a natural color that's not gonna change your wood very much, you wanna go with the color that's called pure because the natural color actually has some pigment in it. So a clear finish like this is gonna be the pure. And then if you wanna put a color on, they have lots and lots of different colors if you wanna do it that way. Now, once you've got your second coat of this stuff on, if you decide to put a second coat on, I would recommend that if you're not using the stuff with the hardener, you let it sit for at least seven days before you go paddling. Ideally, you should let it sit for three weeks, but most people wanna get on the water a little bit quicker than that. So just be gentle with it for the first couple weeks while you're paddling, and it should finish its cure time without having any adverse effects on the coating. So that's working with Rubio Monocoat, and this is my personal preference because I feel like it just represents a really great value in terms of what you're getting for the amount of money and the amount of time that you're expending there. But there's other ways that you can get a similarly durable finish, and one of them is called burnishing. And this is a traditional woodworking technique that involves scrubbing the oil really hard, kind of like we scrubbed the Rubio in, with a little bit of the sawdust actually mixed into a slurry. And it just ends up filling in the pores of the wood. It gives you a nice, hard, and really nice, shiny, durable finish as well. Now, the instructions I'm gonna give you for this are not my actual personal instructions because I don't burnish because it just takes a little bit of time and I'm usually pretty busy and I like the results I get with the Rubio. But if you wanna try this, it is a really cool technique. The instructions that I'm gonna give you are from Max Love, who wrote me from New Zealand. He's a paddle builder down there and he's really convinced that this is one of the best systems for covering a Greenland paddle. So, if you wanna burnish, 
your Greenland paddle, you're gonna start with pure tongue oil with no solvents. And how you're gonna apply this stuff is, after you've done sanding your paddle down to what I recommend, which is 220 grit, you're gonna go even further with the sanding schedule. You wanna sand to 400 grit, and then finally, you wanna sand it with a thousand grit sandpaper, but don't wipe the sawdust off. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna get your pure tongue oil and you're gonna get your thousand grit sandpaper and you're gonna scrub that tongue oil physically into the surface of the wood with the thousand grit sandpaper, really working to try to get that sawdust and that oil really integrated into the wood surface. Now, once you're done with that, you wanna set your paddle aside and just let it sit with the oil on it for about 24 hours and then come back the next day and you're gonna wipe it completely dry. Now, once you've done that, you can let this sit for one week and then you can come back with 2000 grit sandpaper and you can just scrub that entire surface and it's gonna leave this really hard and very tough surface on the outside of the paddle. And then even though that is gonna be a lot tougher than a regular oil finish, it might still get dinged up over the time, in which case you can just come in and do a quick spot repair. So that's a little bit more of an advanced woodworking technique. I don't know if it actually functionally increases the life of the paddle, but it is gonna make it look nicer for longer than going with a cheap oil technique.